The following recording was created by the Regional Educational Laboratory Southeast at Florida State University. Information and materials for this recording are supported by the Institute of Education Sciences, National Center for Education Evaluation and Regional Assistance, Regional Educational Laboratory Southeast at Florida State University. Contract ED-IES-17-C-0011 as resources and examples for the listener's convenience. Their inclusion is not intended as an endorsement by the Regional Educational Laboratory Southeast or its funding source, the Institute of Education Sciences. In addition, the activities and instructional model discussed in this recording are not intended to mandate, direct, or control a state's local educational agencies or schools' specific instructional content, academic achievement system, and assessments, curriculum, or program of instruction. State and local programs may use any instructional content, achievement system and assessments, curriculum, or program of instruction they wish. My name is Kayla Sather, and I will be leading a discussion between three individuals from Innovation Academy at South Campus, including Kelly Johnson, the principal, Amy Raddick, a teacher or learning designer, and Ashley Jara, a former student who recently completed her three years at Innovation Academy and, that, and is now in high school. We are also joined by Dee McKenzie, a RHEL Southeast staff member currently working with Innovation Academy. Innovation Academy is located in Smithville, North Carolina within the Johnston County Public School System. Students at Innovation Academy are pioneers, and rather than being described by their grade levels, they are considered first, second, or third year pioneers. Our conversation today will focus on Innovation Academy's work to ensure equity as a foundation for their four pillars of learning, project-based learning, or PBL, personalized learning, standards-based grading and competency-based education, or CBE, and social-emotional learning with a restorative practices focus. Please introduce yourselves and provide a brief introduction of your role or connection to Innovation Academy. Uh, my name is Kelly Johnson. Um, I am the lead learner uh, or principal at Innovation Academy at South Campus. Um, in our vision statement, it's noted that um, we are a lab school, um, which is a community of pioneering teacher leaders, uh, students and families um, committed to approaching learning in innovative and personalized ways. Uh, our mission is that we are committed to providing those personalized learning experiences um, to empower um, both our learning designers um, and our students and their families to make positive changes in their world. My name is Amy Roddick and I'm a sixth grade learning designer at the Innovation Academy and I've been there for four years now. Hello, my name is Ashley Jara and I'm currently a ninth grade student at the Johnson County Early College Academy but I completed three years as a pioneer at Innovation Academy. And my name is Dee McKenzie, and I'm the RAIL Southeast, um, excuse me, I'm with RAIL Southeast, and I've been working with the staff at Innovation Academy for over uh, the past year uh, to provide technical assistance and support in achieving their goals to incorporating uh, research-based equity practices into CB, uh, competency-based education and personalized learning. Thank you. So what should people know about Innovation Academy and what does equity and competency-based education mean at Innovation Academy? We'll start with you, Kelly. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, we want people to know that we do welcome all learners from all backgrounds um, and ability levels at uh, Innovation Academy at South Campus. We do focus our recruitment, um, and we're just coming out of recruitment season now, um, on first generation uh, potential college students, um, as well as our students from our most impoverished areas in our district um, along the 95 corridor. Um, we want our student population overall though to match uh, the demographics of our district. So kind of a microcosmic example of um, the 37,000 in our 300. Uh, we are, um, our foundation is um, built by four pillars that you mentioned earlier, uh, PBL, PL, um, SBG, CBE, and SEL. How about those for all those acronyms? Um, but those are just our shorthand, of course, for NRJ, for restorative justice. But, um, you know, we, with project-based learning or PBL, um, we are encouraging our students to develop real-life, relevant, authentic skills 
um, of collaboration and problem solving as they um, go about investigating and responding to authentic and complex questions and problems or challenges. Um, and we go about that in, uh, with an interdisciplinary approach uh, that allows them to learn material in context, um, but also understanding that, that you know, we, the way we plan it, it is really in line with brain science, which is, means that there's not a compartment necessarily for math or not a compartment for science. It's all you know, intermingled. And so uh, we just recently had a project with our second year pioneers where um, in one project, there were 13 learning standards across content areas that were addressed that students were able to demonstrate mastery of. So it allows us to be really efficient too. Um, our students have personalized pathways um, built around their entry point um, and their and where they're how they are growing and at what pace toward mastery of learning standards to determine that progression. Um, for them and with them um, is, is part of our equity focus as well. So it's not about one student against another student or that kind of traditional mindset of competition among, it's really me against me. Um, am I further along today than I was yesterday? Is my knowledge deeper? Are my skill sets sharper? Um, and so, you know, that, that, that's what allows us to, um, you know, really approach it from that equity focus. And, and again, going back to social emotional learning, um, for us, it's not a, a thing, right? It's not a separate thing. Social emotional learning belongs to all of us. Um, I used the term the other day, I'm a counselor, <laughs> a counselor and principal, right? So um, it belongs to every single one of us that can't just live with, um, with our counselors. So we see our, our kids as humans first and we see each other as humans first. And so when you know the human, um, you're able to design pathways that are respective um, to what they need. Um, and that comes into play with relationships too. You know, we understand ourselves, we come to understand each other, um, we are less likely because of the investment on the, on the front end to mistreat each other. But then when we do, we have ways of asking each other questions um, that get at the why behind what we do and then allows us to repair what's been harmed so that we can move forward and re-engage in the learning process. Um, and that's got to be in a safe environment. It's got to be with a focus of coaching. You know, when I, when I ask you a question, it doesn't mean that I'm saying to you, you're a bad person. Um, it might mean that we made a bad decision um, and we need to revisit that decision and um, realize that none of us is perfect, um, adults, kids, otherwise, and, um, but we're going to walk through that, that journey together. So that's, that's equity for us. Thank you. What about from the student perspective? Ashley, what would you want people to know about Innovation Academy? Yeah, so as a student, I want people to know that attending Innovation Academy is a life-changing experience. Innovation Academy is different from a traditional school in the sense that we can learn at our own pace, we're exposed to new types of learning, and ultimately are in an environment that equips us with the skills we need not only for school, but in life. At Innovation Academy, the teachers work incredibly hard to provide pathways for all types of learners. Innovation Academy is so special because us students are given the choice to take control of our learning with the immense support of teachers by our side. Though I always liked being in a collaborative learning environment. I had peers who enjoyed working alone, of course, with the help of the teachers by their side. Innovation Academy is a supportive environment for all students and will and teachers always will find ways to help students and support them in their journey of learning. In terms of relationships we build at school, the teachers, staff, and students are still like a second family to me. As a student, I benefited from having strong connections with my teachers because I felt that I was in an environment where I could express my feelings and ask for help when I needed it, rather than struggling alone. On that note, Everyone at Innovation Academy is given the opportunity to learn and explore topics that they enjoy and are important to them. This differs from a traditional school because we can use our interests and skills and use them in our learning and become immersed in our education because we're interested and we want to express ourselves. All in all, Innovation ha has made me learn the importance of education and has offered me so many opportunities for which I am grateful to become a better person and individual. That's great. Thanks, Ashley. 
Um, so Kelly, you mentioned the four pillars and the focus that you have at Innovation Academy on those. Can you tell us a little bit more about how these pillars are all connected and how they're all kind of built on this foundation of equity or how they're all equity driven? Uh, yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to try to um, not fall apart after hearing Ashley speak. I'm just like, I'm overwhelmed. Um, man, she's incredible. You are incredible. <laughs> um, yeah, our four pillars, it is, um, it, sometimes I think we, we think you have to be one or the other, right? You either have to be a PBL school um, focused on that, or you have to focus on personalized learning or standards-based competency-based feedback, you know, or social emotional, like the, those have to be separate entities. When in fact, what we see is the power in the intertwining, the interconnectedness. Uh, we start with the social emotional, um, you know, even like in the way we schedule our time, um, you know, starting with a school-wide community meeting each morning followed by advisory. So for the first really good part of our day um, in the morning, we focus just on human connection right from the start. And that's what allows us um, to uh, open up space for, um, for that learning and that growth to happen in a safe environment. And so just a safe environment for every single learner to come as, as they are is, is equity. Um, and so that's a, a really important um, thing for us. It doesn't have to be some complex um, set of things you put together. It, it's, it's really pretty simple. Um, it's about our mindset and about how we set things up and, and how we provide those avenues for students to advocate and to find their voice, um, you know, as Ashley has so beautifully done. Um, and so, um, you know, we, what we strive to do is to model those approaches that do, um, that do work to kind of close that predictability gap that we are uh, seeking to close um, and to model that for others so that it's, it's shown that it is possible um, and that, you know, with the right mindset and with our staying aligned to our purpose every day, um, that it really can be done and, and that it, it, it doesn't feel like work. It just feels like purpose. So what is the role of equity, specifically in personalized learning and competency-based education? Amy, let's start with you. So kind of touching on what Ashley brought up um, with student choice, student voice, uh, that only comes through teachers understanding their students, getting data from their students, talking to their students. So for us, um, from the very beginning, the team of teachers I was with, you know, we didn't, we didn't know it was called CBE learning. We didn't know it was called, um, you know, all the acronyms that we've already talked about within this meeting. We, the focus was get to know your students through activities, through uh, relationship building activities. Um, we do that through advisory for like the first week. You know, we embarrass ourselves in front of each other. We laugh with each other. We, you know, do all the things. And, um, and then we immediately start collecting that information as data. So as teachers, every interaction is another data point for us. It's evidence towards what that student needs, where they are and how they move forward. Um, we do that on the social emotional level. We do that on even uh, mental, their mental abilities within moments change based off experiences they're having in the classroom and outside the classroom. And you can measure that if you know where they are to begin with. Um, and then academically, we, we're collecting data nonstop. Everything is looked at. Everything is discussed with students. The way we teach innovatively and, you know, allowing students kind of move on their own pathways allows us to check in with students on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I'm not stuck in front of the classroom lecturing for 40 minutes. I'm moving around. I'm helping students one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you know, classrooms can look chaotic <laughs> because students are doing their own thing in different parts and you see the teacher kind of just running around the whole time. Um, I miss that actually, you know, this past year has kind of halted uh, that type of behavior for us. Uh, but we, the, the bottom line is understanding where your students are and knowing you can't fit, you know, I can't say this student is like this student. They're two very different people with two very different sets of needs from me as their teacher, as their science teacher, as their advisory teacher. Um, and, you know, we, I work with brilliant people. My team, even from the first year, my team was, I mean, I brag that 
we're still like the bomb, like there's no stop in us. And it's because we have the ability to communicate with each other on the same philosophical level as this. We all understand not, if we don't understand the student, we can't fix any issues the student will have academically, socially, or emotionally. So equity comes in as understanding no one's on this straight line. No one's on the same start line. Everyone's finish line looks different. Um, and getting them from their start line to their finish line is the goal. So, I, I mean, I was lucky. Again, I work with people that have that same mindset. So, and that was naturally before we had all these names to give it too, which is pretty cool. So now that we have all these names, we have this structure where we can really kind of chunk our thinking and how we develop curriculum for the students. It allows me to be a little bit more organized. <laughs> it allows me to kind of check in with what step we may be thinking on. But yeah, e equity is not about necessarily that equal start line. Equity is about the individual start, like that more of that dialogue, diagonal coaching mindset. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. All right. And Dee, would you add anything to that? Yeah, that's so powerful. It's like, what, what else is there to add? Um, <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, um, uh, I guess what I would add is that Innovation Academy is, is they're making sure that equity has a role in their overall teaching and learning approach. I mean, they are very intentional in making sure that equity is the focus. I, I know that my colleague, uh, Frank McKay, has been with the school since its inception. And um, he has supported them in, in providing coaching uh, sessions throughout, throughout, the, throughout the years. Um, I've come on board to support in designing and um, collaborating with the staff to uh, create professional learning sessions that, that have an equity focus. And I am, I am really impressed with the fact that the teachers are constantly looking to research and the coaching support to, to make sure that equity is intentional in their planning for, for, for each student. Um, and, you know, in spite of the fact that, um, you know, the pandemic has, has, has come and is still here, we've been able, we, ha we haven't missed a beat. I mean, <laughs> we've been able to adapt and shift to ensure that the work moves forward and that equity continues to be the focus. Thank you, Dee. Let's expand on that just a little bit and come back to some of what Amy was just talking about. Um, Amy, what are some ways, maybe even a specific example, that you incorporate equity into your planning, your teaching, and your interaction with students? Um, so I'll start with interaction first because everything else is collaborative. So the interaction from just me to a student individually is, um, I like to call myself like the coach teacher I motivate as if I was coaching them through the information. That's my mindset. That's how I kind of take on things. I try to add a level of competitiveness on an individual level with everything because that's how I learn. So I kind of show, show that students that way, then you know we interact that way. But um, for instance, I have a student who I'm you know, more concerned about their home life I'm more concerned about what they're experiencing outside of school and how that's influencing their ability to perform in my classroom. Versus, let's say I have a student who I, I'm in communication with parents all the time. I know the support is not just from the classroom. I know the support matches from home. So the way I interact with that child is more task oriented because I know they have that support for me where I can be more like, I know you can do this, let's get this done. Versus a student who I know doesn't have that matching support from home, my conversation with them is different. We have to talk about how can we, be, how can we get task oriented? What do you need from me to feel supported to start this assignment? How do we go through it together even sometimes to kind of mirror or mimic what they need, maybe what they're not getting elsewhere. So again, I don't talk to all my students the same way it's impossible to do that. I can't coach them all the same way. That's impossible. So based off the data we get from just interacting with them is how I plan to interact with them on an individual basis um, and how I motivate each student differently on an individual basis. Everything else is collaborative. Everything else is collaborative. We group students based off their needs. We teach different classes differently. 
based off the group of students that we have in front of us. We scaffold and structure uh, projects in curriculum differently based on the students in front of us. And we change schedules all the time based off that data that we're getting. You know, that's kind of the culture shock for a lot of sixth grade parents and students when they come in. Cause I'm like, oh no, no, this is the schedule for like this week. <laughs> Tomorrow, you know, next week it's gonna be this because we're doing this as a team. We're doing, you know, core four is now gonna be a project that we all teach together. So the schedule has to change to reflect that. Um, we, oh. We allow students, like, and when we do do projects, we also do a lot of surveys. We do a lot of Google Forms for students. You know, what type of project are you interested in doing? Or we get information just based off their interests. And then we can even group students based off interests before we dive into a project. Uh, and again, that's all collaborative. That's not me by myself. That's everyone on the team. We make those surveys together. We group those students together. We co-teach uh, as a sixth grade team. So, you know, um, Ms. Stilly, our ELA teacher, loves to fall in with literacy standards. So because her argument, and it's, and it's awesome because she's like, my standards can fit any course of study. She does nonfiction literacy through me, through science class because that's all I give them is nonfiction literature practice. Um, so it's, it's kind of cool how we can mesh like that. And then it allows us a whole block of freedom to determine what we want to do as a group with the students. And we allow, you know, those opportunities give us some fun things to do. Now, like I said, this past year, obviously is a little different because um, we don't all have them in front of us at the same time, which kind of, adds another layer of complexity to everything. So Kelly, as the principal, why was it important to make equity an intentional part of your work, um, especially over the last year? Well, I think what you, what I hope you've taken away um, from, you know, a lot of what Amy has shared too is, is just this word intentional. You used it in the question. Um, everything is intentional from our hiring processes you know, um, picking the right humans to fold into the team with the right mindset um, and maybe not necessarily coming with a full skill set that matches everything that we do. But with that mindset that like I'm game, I'm here to learn. I'm here to do it together. Um, I love children. <laughs> I love people. And so those are our people typically so intentional in that way. Um, you know, and when it comes to that, what Amy described also with the, the inner interdependence of the team, that doesn't happen by just walking in the room and turning on the light switch. So the building and nurturing of trust is also very intentional. And that starts with me. So, you know, people have to have to trust me and that, um, you know, I'm going to, to do exactly what I say I'm going to do with them, which is to support them and let them, I mean, not only let them, but encourage them to take risks that we then reflect on and then we, we change. Um, even the changing of the schedules, you know, what I hope you heard is that, um, you know, in our setting, whereas maybe traditionally time is the, is the constant and learning is a variable, for us, it's the opposite. Learning is the constant and time, how we structure that time is the variable. And so that, you know, being responsive um, is important. So again, going back to your question about, especially over this past year, being responsive, um, you know, just in thinking about heading into that weekend that we all remember from last year where the world kind of closed down, our teachers, you know, just with the, with the possibility of something perhaps potentially happening over the weekend, they went ahead and took it into their own hands at the end of that week and started coaching the students up on, hey, if this were to happen, we hope not, you know, but if this were to happen, this is what you need to know. So they paused and, and coached them up. And so like Dee was talking about not skipping a beat, we were able to, at the start of the following week, really just get right back online, you know, with our, with our kids, we had to get some devices in hands. Uh, we had to help with hotspots, um, make sure that um, access was possible. Um, but for us, you know, our students, because they're chasing mastery and they're also rooted in a relationship with the teacher and with each other, that was motivation. That's a very different source for them to continue working. Um, and for us as a team to continue working with one another, because we didn't stand around and go, well, what do we do next? 
we're like, well, we were, we're not exactly sure, but we're figuring it out and really quick because our kids need us to, our families need us to. And so, um, you know, that was, and knowing them, like Amy said, knowing them, knowing their home situations, knowing what they need and what, and what they lack and using that information, not to judge, but to assist and support. Um, that mindset has carried us into um, this year and really kind of um, carried us through it as well because of that mindset, um, just knowing that we do have a little bit of everything in our learning environment that makes us really special um, and really unique, but also um, utilizing that information as, a, as an asset and not a deficit um, is, is all about mindset um, and how we approach. So Dee, from a research and coaching standpoint, um, what are some of the ways that you see the relationship building, the competency-based education, how those things work to promote equity within schools? And then how do you see this playing out in the work currently with Innovation Academy? So let me just start by saying that it has been an awesome experience to work alongside the staff at Innovation Academy. I mean, it, it's truly a breath of fresh air because they model and breathe the name, innovation. I mean, <laughs> day in and day out. And um, when I think about personalized learning and, and CBE, I mean, it's just a natural fit when it comes, when it comes to equity. And, um, and, and so in both of those, um, we have to be intentional. I'm gonna use their word, intentional, uh, and, and recognize the need to make this part of every aspect of the, wor aspect of the work. And, and again, um, innovation does that um, day in and day out. Um, the staff is on board, there's no doubt, um, and they're very excited to learn and implement and continuously improve together. Um, as, you've, as you've heard um, in what Kelly and um, Amy have shared thus far. Um, and the fact that is, the focus is so student centric. I mean, everything rev revolves around the student. So students are involved in the learning process and um, they truly have high expectations for, for all students. So there's, there's, no, there's no getting out. Uh, <laughs> I mean, nope, <laughs> that's not gonna happen here in innovation. The expectations are there for students. And, and as a result, we have Ashley and she is, is truly a bright shining star. <laughs> 